Hello Booktube. Today we're going to do another Marilyn book spotlight. This time the book we will be looking at is Marilyn Monroe and Joe DiMaggio Love in Japan, Korea and Beyond by Jennifer Jean Miller. Now I do I know Jennifer on Facebook so hello Jen if you see this I hope you like this little spot check on your book. Um, so basically this tells the story of, of Joe and Marilyn through um, it chronicles their lives from the days before they met um, right up until after the end and then it does go into the death which uh, is the only part of the book I don't like. Cause, um, um, Jennifer has been collecting Marilyn's career photos for a very long time and this book features some of her collection. Um, it's kind of like a self-published book I believe. JJ Avenue Productions, yeah. So this is a self-published book, came out in 2014. I love the cover with the little rose petals and the lovely picture of Joe and Marilyn on their wedding day. I actually have two copies of this book. And the reason for this is I purchased this one from Amazon myself and I, I read it and wrote a review of it on what was then my Marilyn uh, blog, which I don't do anymore, sadly. I do still have access to it, so I might uh, republish the review onto my Books, Books, Books blog at some point. Um, and um, as I'm friends with Jennifer on Facebook, she very kindly sent me another copy, which is signed. And with a little message that basically says May 2014, because that was how long ago it was. Dear Andrew, thank you for everything. Um, from Japan, Korea and beyond, Jennifer. Uh, so yeah, it's basically got some chapters. So before their love, so that's before they come together, love and marriage, so you know, love in Japan and Korea. So when they went to Korea and Japan on honeymoon, uh, true love de never dies. True love comes to the rescue. So this is when they were split up and towards the end of her life and then love beyond life. So this is after Marilyn died. So the photographs are absolutely beautiful. They there is interviews with people. She credits other authors like Michelle Morgan, who has written one of the definitive books on Marilyn, which is Private and Undisclosed. And so it's full of stories and there's a lovely rare colour picture of Marilyn and Jane that's doing their hand and footprints at Grauman's. Um, there is a huge bibliography of her research um, and it does go into what happened after her death. So there were also, she debunked some of the rumours about um, Jose Bolanes and that um, he didn't speak to her on the day she died, he, she wasn't going to marry him. Um, calls that came in. I, I, I don't know about her death, I'm not going to go into it because I know a lot of people disagree with Jennifer's conclusions on that and that has to do with her affiliation with Marilyn's cousin, second cousin Jason. I'm not going to get into that, she does have a full book on Marilyn that she wrote with Jason Kennedy about that. I haven't read it, so I'm not going to say a word about it. I'm only going to talk about this book. So while I find the information pertaining to her death vague in this, I know they do go into it in a greater depth in their other book, which I can't remember the name of because I don't actually own it yet because it's £32 and I will get it because I am one of those people I like to be fair. To, to authors. I will not tell you a book is good or bad unless I've read it. So while I know that there are people out there who have taken the book that Jason Kennedy and Jennifer have written about Marilyn, her life and her death, and it is a very big book with a lot of information in it, so I do want to read it, and say well actually it's rubbish, it's all nonsense, until I've read it myself, I am not going to draw that conclusion because that is not fair on the work that has gone into the book. The same as with the J.J. the J.I. Baker novel on her death, The Empty Glass, which I wasn't that keen on because there was a lot of misrepresentation in there, there was a lot of errors in there. Um, I need to read things for myself before I can make a decision. With Blonde, I couldn't finish it because 
the lies that Joyce Carol Oates spun in it was horrendous. The way that she represented Marilyn was offensive. But Jennifer's book is truly a labour of love and it is about the love of Joe and Marilyn. So it goes on like chapter five, True Love Comes to the Rescue is about after Marilyn divorced Miller and she broke up with Milton Green, um, about how Joe did come to her rescue at some point and he did. There are bits about um, psychiatry in there that people who agree and like psychiatry won't like. I personally think that the psychiatrist did Marilyn more harm than good. I don't think Greenson helped her. I don't believe in the Freudian st stuff. I just don't, I don't get it. Um, and I think they did her a lot more harm than good. Um, and then there's some more pictures of Joe and Marilyn. And it, you know, it is a beautifully written book on Marilyn and Joe. And I just think it's a lovely story. Um, so Love Beyond Death tells us about how Joe arranged her funeral. It goes then into um, people who collect their stuff. Um, let's just have a look. About probable suicide. The author of this book can vouch, however, that sadly with the sale of her personal effects, Marion's items have ended up in the hands of some who have no idea how to properly care for them. I agree. The author of this book has personally been shipped Marilyn's dresses which were sent in two plastic grocery bags that floated carelessly around in a priority mailbox. Many collectors do not handle, handle her items as they should because they are not museum professionals. This is true. Even some museum professionals do not care. The author witnessed one museum curator throw one of Marilyn's garments casually onto a chair right after winning it at an auction. Others have handled Marilyn's items with bare hands while placing them on display and damaged them. So with dresses, um, I mean, these dresses are over 50 years old, so they do need to be handled with care. Um, then there's stuff about counterfeit items. There's stuff about her death. How Joe never really got over it and how he blamed the Kennedys, allegedly. Um, there's one thing I will say about Joe, whether you like him or not. There is, because of the way he allegedly treated her, they say he did slap her around, they did beat her. I don't know. I wasn't there. I always say there's three sides to every story. Her side, his side, and the truth is somewhere in the middle. I have no doubt that Joe was frustrated with Marilyn when she was ex ex exhibitioning herself, when she was doing things like the seven inch. I have no doubt about that because it was the 50s and that wasn't done. But then I can also see it from Marilyn's point of view in the fact that, well, I am Marilyn Monroe. Who the hell did you think you were marrying? You know? So, you know, he, you, can't, you can't make people change. But for anybody who truly doubts how much Joe loved her, that's true grief. And it's so sad. I mean, he was offered $50,000 from a calls interview about his life with Marilyn. He wouldn't do it. And he was known to storm out of events when they turned into an inquisition about Marilyn. In fact, people knew you never brought up her name in his presence. And he sent roses to her for 20 years. And there are lots of various bits on people he did go out with afterwards who didn't, you know, write it. And then there's some lovely pictures of Joe on his own. I think the thing, it goes into then um, Joe's life without Marilyn and how he loved her after. And it, this is my favourite thing that it said, it is said that in Morris's book, this is Engel, uh, Morris Engelberg, that um, Engelberg, oh, there was somebody who wrote a book on him. Morris, I'm sure it's Morris Engelberg, but it, it, it was some, it was his his lawyer or something. In Morris's book, 
As Joe exhaled his last breath, he removed his tracheotomy tube and articulated in a whisper his anticipation for his upcoming journey. I'll finally get to see Marilyn. That always makes me cry. This is a book I will be reading again. There's the lovely Jennifer. Hello. And, um, there is a lot of, like I said, information on where they've got their sources, books, online articles, news articles. And a lot of these books I've read, so. And basically, let's just leave that there. It is a beautifully produced book that tells the story of Joe and Marilyn's love. And from my point of view, it is worth having. I know there are some people who don't agree and don't like Jennifer and her books. I actually love this book. I'm very grateful that Jennifer took the time to send me another copy from America because I know how expensive it is to send books um, from America to the United Kingdom. So I really do appreciate her sending it to me. It does have a uh, pride of place with both the other copy. They're all together on my shelves and I do love them. I would recommend it. It's a lovely story. It tells you the story of Joe and Marilyn. Um, it goes quite in depth. They're beautifully produced. The photographs are absolutely gorgeous. So yes, pick it up. It is definitely worth a read. And we may judge books by their covers, but we should really, really judge books by their contents. Don't judge this book because of what you might have heard about it. 